Hello everybody. Once again, I'm Lee McCrafton Jr. aka Zorvala Chan Less Than Guru and we are doing Torg Tuesdays today. Right here we have Mars the Video Cat and I um, am going to do a deep dive into this book, Blood on the Blasted Lands, the mega adventure for Tharkle that I helped writing, uh, write it along with uh, the co-authors of John Watson and Brian Reeves and uh, Basically, last Wednesday, so just under a week ago, I finished taking a group through this through uh, Torganize Play, and it was streamed, and it is currently on Roll, Hit, Die, the channel both uh, Twitch and on uh, here on YouTube. And also, there's been, um, while I was going through this, other people have been going through this, of course, because it's a somewhat recent release this year. We just got the physical form uh, a month or two, say, ago, and people have been having questions. So I figured I would do kind of a, a dive into this on things that I think might be important or interesting, problems that might happen uh, for Game Masters, kind of things like that so this will probably be a long video um, because I tend to go off on tangent tangents as well as I want to go through kind of this whole thing now if you are a player and are going to go through this I suggest you to just turn off or skip this video and go elsewhere if you're a game master you might want to look at this and get some ideas and stuff and some of the things that might have been going on in my head during the time that i wrote this as well as uh now when i went through it as an actual game master for a group that before then i had never game mastered over so it's one thing if you're play testing or going through ideas with a group that's your home group that you're familiar with. It's kind of a completely different thing if you're uh, game mastering an adventure for str strangers. So I basically uh, will break it down act by act. So the, the first act here is one that um, I will just kind of go through. I won't necessarily go scene by scene, but I do want to point out a couple of things that might help you and things like that. So the, the first thing in Act 1 is there is kind of a, a pre-mission mission, uh, mission briefing. And it takes place in Berlin. And from Berlin, the, the group of Storm Knights is told what their objective is. Their objective is to get information primary. That's their first objective. And the second information is this this information was obtained by a alpha clearance Storm Knight group that were doing something else. They were trying to establish a safe house in uh, near Nizhny Novgorod, which is a city um, about six, uh, six hours train ride drive away from Moscow. And one of the things in Tharkold in Torg Eternity is President Volkov, who is the Russian, the country Russia, the president of the country. He's also one of three power players of Tharkold, the reality, which are similar but different. Tharkold is the invading reality and it has bounded Stele area in eastern Russia, the European part of Russia, and some of the uh, Soviet bloc of the uh, Cold War era. And basically, the president is also the president of all of Russia. So even A Asia Russia, uh, Eastern Russia, is part of Russia. So he's the president of that. He's also one that he's taking it upon himself to make it known that he is an ally of Earth. He actually stopped the invaders. He actually forced a peace treaty with the invaders. So he's taking that kind of stance. And the social of Tharkold, th social axiom is 25, which is too higher than core Earth. So he is using propaganda in a way that might not be necessarily easy to understand. And he is, is doing that with his social axiom. And one of the uh, things with him is he has kind of an alliance, a loose alliance with the Delphi Council. But since he is stating, I have 
defended my own country. I do not need the Delphi Council. At first, he did not allow Delphi Council to establish headquarters within his country. And now, since the Tharkold area is being fought over by uh, him, President Volkov, Jezreel, a, uh, a slave who revolted against her former master, the ex-high lord she slain, and then Thrachin, a te techno demon. Now there's a lot of fighting there, but Volkov is still trying to, no, you cannot come into Russia. We can have an alliance. I can give your people passes and permits and, you know, accept visas to come in, but you are not establishing this in my base, then this in my area, my country, um, stuff like that. So the pre-mission takes place in Berlin. And somebody asked, because very soon after that, they go to Russia, and then they kind of get a little addition to how they're gonna get into the Tharkold reality. So they're gonna go from Berlin, and they're gonna go right to the, it would be the west of the Euros, so right on the eastern part of the, uh, Europe area of Russia and then they're going to go and that's still core earth and then go into Tharkold and somebody asked uh, I just or just say that I just started it there because I didn't see a point of going from here flying to there and then one of the choices that they get is to fly into it so why not just start it there and go go there and if that's what you want to do with your home group that's perfectly fine perfectly valid the reason as writers that we had it take place in Berlin was because Berlin has an actual Delphi Council headquarters and Russia is not allowing the Delphi Council to establish headquarters there. Now they're trying to get safe houses and that's part of that Alpha Group's mission was to establish a hidden safe house, but even those are kind of hard to do. But that's the reason that they start in Berlin and then go to uh, I can't remember what the the town city is called, but then they go from there into Tharkold, and that is is the reason. Um, and so the first thing is to get information from or get information that this Alpha Clearance Storm Knight group had that was supposed to be important. They basically were doing this thing in Nizhny Novgorod, trying to get a safe house. And they come across some other information and they're like we need to be extracted so please get us out they got coordinates and then they disappeared so the storm knights first is if this is very important information where an alpha clearance group decided to not continue with their mission that we gave them ask for extraction that information is very important so one get the information two secondary is if you come across this Storm Knight group known as Saber Company, then help if you can get them out, help them out too. So that is, is, is part of it. So I'm just looking real fast. I I'm, don't want to waste too much time, but th they travel, they travel, they learn, and then there's various ways to get into Tharkold. And that's something that um, we as authors kind of took feedback. We always try to get feedback from pre previous adventures. And one of the things that I've been noticing was people were saying, we want more choices. And as authors, we cannot always come up with all the different various choices that a Storm Knight group PCs will think about. But we can come up with a, a few suggestions and so there's a few ways to get in there and they each have their pros and, and cons to, to get in there. Um, I know when you can watch on the Ulysses Spila YouTube channel, Greg Gordon, uh, the, one of the co-creators of Torg as Torg, and now is the main person over Torg right now, Torg Eternity, um, he takes a group through Act 1. And they, I believe, decided to um, go through pipes, some abandoned oil pipes, and that's the, the way that they went through. My group decided to take a flight and go it. So there's various ways that they can get across it, and I believe there was another group that um, somebody on the Piazza forums 
was saying that their group, I think, walked across the frozen river, which is possible in Russia, and brought up some interesting things. And each way is valid. Let let your group decide. You don't have to force them to, to do anything. And if they come up with a, a crazy thing, they have a weird scientist that has a, a fabulous digging machine and they're going to dig under, let them do that and ha have something pop up underground or some complication happen or make it a DSR or something like that. But you can come up with ways. We're not, we know, we in no way, shape or form are trying to force you to do this and as an example the the cold walk the walking across that there was some environmental hazards that could happen and that was kind of the dramatic part of that choice and the person who was writing on the forum said my party kind of just blew past it because they had bought some like iron uh, environmental tents and they just popped up these magical environmental tents and went in and, and waited out the storm and you know they they were kind of uh feeling bad about that as a game master like oh i i should have came up with something else and for me i'm just like they spent the time and resources to either buy or acquisition that then let them use it my party didn't you know do it so they had to you know they went a different way but if that's the way your party goes and your party skips a dangerous thing because they're smart let them do it i don't have a problem with that as a game master um during my run through of it there were various times where players played the uh close call uh, card which basically allows them to kind of get around an encounter and it was just like okay they got around the encounter good for them they didn't have to sit there and fight some extra battle or do some extra thing they just passed by it and sometimes it brought up uh, which i'll get to later it brought up some very interesting things at least that i thought were interesting in my game so basically that is kind of the the first staging they, they go from berlin they go to outside of in, in russia but outside of the tharkold border and then they cross into the tharkold border and at that time then they start doing things um there is a point where there is a person that's a very not good person um he is a chop shop basically uh owner i wouldn't even necessarily call him a sh chop shop doc but he goes out and he cuts off or he might even kill people it's kind of hinted at that uh, and then takes their occult tech and sells it for a profit and when the group meets him somebody was like we my, my group negotiated but he has stats to fight you know and they didn't want to fight well if they don't want to fight don't fight um out of the three groups that i know about this person who wrote on piazza uh greg gordon's uh live stream that he did that's here on youtube now and mine all three negotiated for different ways to get what they needed from this person his stats are in there because we realize that some groups might want to fight him might want to see him as oh he's a bad guy and we need to get rid of this bad guy so they could go that way that's why we included statistics um because there are times where you don't expect the, the party to fight somebody and they do so that's why we did that but if they can negotiate with it that's fine uh great gordon's team negotiated there were some psionic type mines out there that would explode if people got too close and one group disposed of them as a favor for this person my group uh they had come across a synth cycler and had killed the pilot and had this synth cycler and they traded the synth cycler for this and i think a, another group traded something else for it so there's multiple ways and we didn't say you have to do it this way because we want to see what ingenious things the player characters come up with and that makes it more interesting so uh that's part of of uh act or the the, the first act there is a really cool scene uh where a a medium a psychic medium which are very popular things in in russia they have uh even more tv shows than we have here in the united states about mediums and psychics and fortune tellers and stuff like that it's a, a culturally type it, it's culturally significant i guess you could say and one of their 
uh, psychic connections to the Delphi Council, whose name is given to the players, and they have to get something to do that. It um, either it's been this way for a while, and the Delphi Council didn't realize it, or something more recent happened. But it's a cutoff head attached to a machine that is powered by Vril, which is a crystal that basically your pain is uh, crystallized from a machine, and that fuels it. And then she gives off uh, a coordinate. And since I know some Russian, and I've lived in Russia and Ukraine for a period of time, and stuff like that, I when I played it, I basically had these uh, coordinates. I I basically read it off in in Russian. I just thought that that would add a little bit. And if you if you know a place or you can research, you know, Wikipedia and and look online for things, you can use that to bring out little tidbits here and there. Um, what one designing thing I'll bring up that was kind of funny. Um, because there sometimes is a, a language, a comprehension difference, and the person, uh, the, the other author who, who was writing this section, there's a note that she gives the player, or is given to the players for her, and basically it says cr crystal, crystal, it, basically a real crystal. And the original thing, it said Ideen, uh, which means one. But Ideen also means alone. And I was looking at this and reading it, and I was like, if I was given a note that said Ideen, I would probably think that meant that I'm supposed to go there alone. It would not, to me, seem like, hey, go there and ask for one. And I was still like, even though I've spent time in Russia and Ukraine, and I, I, I won't say that I know ma I'm a master of any means through the language, I can get through basic uh, communication. I, uh, to, to the first time I, I went to a Russian speaking uh, area, Kyiv in Ukraine, I went there for basically just decided to hop on a plane, go to some country that I didn't know the, the language and see if I could live there. I was uh, crazy at the time and, and that's what I did. And I had learned through listening some uh, Russian and that city speaks Russian. Um, the official language is Ukraine, but most of the people there speak Russian as well. Most of them are bilingual. Um, but I, I have that type of, of background. And I was like, that's how I would take it. But I have friends, Russian friends. So I asked my Russian friends, if you were given a note that said this, what would you think? And they all said, um, we would say, we would go alone or we would think we were supposed to go there alone so that's some things that that we changed because of that so we changed it to ask for crystal instead of asking for one because the, the word one also means alone so that's just kind of a, a tidbit that i kind of tried to bring through when i was doing a lot of uh kind of looking over what the author, other authors were doing and they kind of did the same for me if i'm doing something that's not in a area that I'm super familiar with because there's always little translation problems and and things like that but that's something that I thought was very very cool and there's a really cool picture of that the uh, the uh, Madam Ulia I think was uh, Ul Uliana Madam Uliana is in there so that is something that I thought was cool and then from there, the party is able to find locations of the transportation that Sabre Company was in, and they find a, a dead member of Sabre Company, and then they can move on and possibly find other members and stuff. Well, there's a point where they find a data pad. And here's something where it's one of three parts of this adventure that when I was going through it, I changed. Because even if I write something, and this is in my home group too, I'll write an adventure beforehand and we get into the adventure. And something just might seem that it needs to be changed or tweaked a little bit um, to help fit the situation better. And one of the things that you might want to use if, if the same, if the, your logic is similar to my logic, was they find a, in, as written, they find a broken interactive map. 
And one of the points is when they get to uh, find the people, the Saber Company, possibly rescue them, that they're told that, okay, the map's broke, but the person who gave us this stuff is over here. And one of the questions that kind of came to my mind is if these people know it, couldn't they just tell the player characters? Because the thing is, is it's not known if they're going to actually rescue Saber Company because that's the secondary thing. The first is get the information. The second is um, rescue Saber Company. And some people will get really focused and tharkled as being this brutal thing of, oh, we're not going to rescue people. And if you as a game master, you can say, yeah, but you're still Storm Knights. That doesn't change that you're you know trying to be heroes or trying to help people. But sometimes they might not do it. So if they don't do it, then maybe they're able to extract enough information on that interactive map that says that, you know, a file name and they get the, uh, you know, when, when you look on a Word document or something, it has that name associated with it. And then they know, okay, we can go here and, and look for this. And it's a person by the name of Adam. So that's legitimate. And that works with that type of thing but if you go with your party is going to rescue saber company which is presented in in the book in a, in a couple of scenes then you might go okay why would saber company not tell them and what i did is i had the the information on the, i gave them the the interactive map and they were able to extract that information and i said that it was encrypted and the reason that saber company was trying to to get extracted from Tharkold is that the information that they had was encrypted but they made a deal with Adam that if they would able and they're just alpha clearance so if they were able to communicate with him in a better way then he would give them the code to decrypt it to you know decipher the encryption and so they had the physical thing that they would take to the Delphi Council and they say, hey, we have this important information on this, this data pad on this interactive map. And if you have a higher up person, not necessarily Quinn Sebastian, but a higher up person contact this person, he will give you that information. And that's the way that I did it. So then there wasn't a, hey, just tell us. It was a, oh, we don't even know. We were trying to get this encrypted information back to the Delphi Council, and therefore um, the Delphi Council could contact this person, but they were taken out, the data pad was busted, so they had to go seek him out because that information, even though I let them extract it, was still encrypted, and they needed the code or key or whatever you want to call it to to get that information. So there's various ways to do that. Now, somebody was like, my people were just stuck on, they got the information and they were not gonna rescue this person. So this whole scene isn't needed. Well, if it's not needed, if it's not needed, but you could have them that if they're going, they get that information and they start going towards Nizhny Novgorod to talk to Adam, then maybe that scene takes place on the way there. So they just come across it naturally. Um, or you don't have to have it. Nothing is saying that you have to do all of these scenes and you have to do them in a certain order, um, you know, in a certain way, in a certain manner. So we gave, as authors, we wrote it and tried to give choices. And sometimes the choice is just not to do it. So that's kind of act one. So then they go to Nizhny Novgorod, which is a city that I, have uh, been to that I lived in for about a month and I had at first claimed it <laughs> claimed it going I want to write about this but there was some miscommunications and stuff and personally I was having a very very hard time writing it um, there were a lot of emotional memories that I had for the city and crazy stuff that happened to me in the city that it was better that the other author took this and I was able to sigh relief and go and move on to another area that I know, but I was also able to, when they were talking about the city, I was able to understand what was going on, where it was going on and, and stuff like that. And then when I ran it as a group, I was able to, again, pull out those, those little tidbits of information here and there. So they basically, they go to 
uh, Nishini Novgorod. It's a pretty neat si uh, scene where most of the city has been destroyed and a small area of it has now has this wall and I found it very interesting because the city is Nizhny Novgorod but the area um, that is there has uh, been turned into low town so that's what people call it's kind of the the main area it's on the other side of the direct opposite side of the, the river that is the uh, Kremlin, the, the Kremlin. Uh, most cities have Kremlins. Kremlin isn't just the Kremlin in Moscow. Basically, Kreml is a, a fortified center of the, the city that used to be kind of like a, a castle or fortress type thing. So that's some other history. So it's just on the other side of that. And the, the name uh, for, for low town, uh, town, Gorod, city, Gorod, um, is like a Niji, so Niji Gorod, Nizhny Novgorod, an area of it becomes like Nizhny Gorod. So I thought that that was really cool that you take the whole city, the smaller section of the city, low town, sounds like a smaller part of the word for or the, the name of the whole city. So I thought that was kind of cool and, and brought that up. And they have to find a way to get into that city that's it's walled. If they go up to the front gates, there's tanks there and lots of soldiers up on the, the wall, you know, with guns pointing down and a, a guard and stuff. And there's various ways to get through it. And we gave quite a few ways as author, you know, gave ways to get into it. If your party comes up with something different, great, let them do something different. Um, if they have an idea card, kind of give them a bunch and let them choose how they do that. But there's different ways into it. There's uh, storming the gate. If you really want to fight those tanks and all those people, storm the gates. Over the wall, find a secluded section, try to get over the walls. Try to forge some papers. Um, there's a river outflow. Um, if you have an area of flight, flight down. There's a... Uh, underground uh, i think that's what my group went to use uh, a subway a abandoned subway system and um my group actually that's one of the places that they used the close call so they didn't have to fight uh the the techno ghouls under the town so and then you get into the the area you kind of stand out as storm nights so there's various people that kind of like hey you're not around here and you can play that as long or as short as you want you find Adam's crew and Adam's been taken away um, basically his his partner um, has been it was the the area of this the Tharkold reality might makes right warlord who's taken over this uh, Adam's partner was going against that warlord so has been taken and then by that adam himself was was taken and there's a a race a, a demon death race type thing death race uh 2000 3000 whatever it was that type of thing and there is ways to like uh you can use a vehicle that maybe you had before they have a vehicle that their his crew is kind of uh a teaming up and there's different things that the party can do to improve that machine and there's not enough time to do all the improvements so the group can determine what types of things that they're going to do what time they're going to spend what upgrades they're going to get which i think is pretty interesting and then there is a a death race and then after the death race there is a fight with a uh, boss pila the warlord over the low town so then after that then Adam is able to either give them the information or give them the decryption sequence and they find out that there is a ravager horde that is coming down from the north and basically destroying everything in its path so one of the places that they then will go to is a, a factory that was was making this type of brute serum it's like these tanks imagine them being clear thermos size that gets implanted into the back with the cult tech and pumps somebody up kind of like venom and batman and it, it makes them like their mind goes down to like a four or five or something crazy like that but they become really strong and they have group 
pack tactics and stuff like that. So then as they, they travel, then they uh, come across some of these ravagers and they go to an abandoned uh, factory because the original factory has been moved. Like the processing part has been moved uh, to Moscow and that area, which was a little bit above uh, Nizhny Novgorod, they are very uh, easily finding somebody who was part of that. And when they left, he kind of hid and has this area to himself now. And is kind of a, a mad scientist and the party can interact with him. They can, and to get the information, they can kill him and read his journal and get a password to get the information but again there's more than just one choice on how they can get that information and then they go to, to moscow and are able to go to the true factory and then the true factory has a big wall around it and has barriers in front of it so then how do they get through that and there's various ways to get through that once they're inside um do they just pretend that they're a race, that they are thralls and, you know, get in line and, and go? Or do they sneak or how do they do things? Various ways to do that. If they want to go full and, you know, blasting, there is a lot, a lot of stuff. And even at beta tier, when you're going up against hundreds of opponents, you might not survive. So, but hey, if you want to try, try. And there's various uh, NPC. NPC threats in there in my personal experience just because of the way I was rolling and I was on roll 20 so there was no fudging because everybody sees the numbers uh, I'm not a big person on fudging dice normally anyway but all my soaks from for at least 60% of my BBEGs or very either powerful or threats that were supposed to actually have meaning um, roll to soak and roll the one and then they died you know one shot it happened uh various times it happened with one of the main people in um, the the death race it happened with uh one of the people in this this actual factory but you just kind of roll with the punches and, and move on um so there there is that type of thing they go they they find they go and they get information and it gives them a little more information on the brute they're able to stop the actual manufacturer of the brute serum but by doing that they catch attention of the person in charge of the complex and the person in charge of the complex then sends a destroyer a cult tech robot machine after them terminator style and this is something that they don't realize right away and they get this information but they find out more information is stored in the cur and the cur is the tharkold hell cyber hell kind of like the godnet in that you go there via like godnet type jackson you know but it's hell it's not godnet ah oh, it is bad and it always uh, amuses me when pre tharkold release people kept asking oh the cur what are the rules what are the rules and we're just like you don't want to go in cur you don't want to go in the cur well, what are the rules i know what you're saying but you don't want to go to cur and some of the cur rules are kind of so, uh, uh, a uh, throwback to old original torg where the godnet had full rules and and the grid, as they called it then, was more of a DSR. And you can do that here. You can do it as a DSR, but we wrote it more of a, you go into it. And any experience in the cur should make people who go in the cur once, if, I'll say, if they get out, to never want to go into the cur again. And then they understand you never want to go into the cur. Now, then people say, well, well, why do you have like these you know grid runners and stuff well sometimes you have to go into the currents you don't want to but you have to go and one of the things is if you don't have the jack to you know and it's 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 a big cable it's not like a little slim thing like a a uh cyber papal you know connection it's this big hose coaxial cable that goes right into the back of your neck and if you don't have that instead of the little temp trod with little things that get you into the god net it's this big helmet that's probably like uh the star wars 
uh, face shield helmet that Luke does blindly. It goes over your eyes and then it ejects needles into your ears and into your eyes and everybody takes damage just to get into the Kerr, which is bad. <laughs> Probably one of the, the few things that my players actually took damage when, when going through was these uh, situational damage, not the actual fighting where they're able to soak and stuff. You get these, these things and you're doing it to yourself, so it's not like you can dodge these needles and that because the needles and that are what are getting you into the, the Kerr. But you, uh, th that's one of the things to get to. But before that, they, because <laughs> I kind of jumped ahead, they go from uh, th this area above Nijinino Road where they have uh, found the abandoned factory. They go to the real factory. They find that it's supposed to be um, that they need to go to the Kerr. Well, they know that there's a safe house nearby, an actual safe house that was able to be established in the. Uh, part of the ruins of Moscow, because Moscow is still kind of the capital, and it has areas for Jezreel, for Volkov, and for Thrachen, but there's lots of ruins, and there's infighting and stuff like that, so they get to a safe house, or as they go into a safe house, they get attacked by the, uh, the destroyer, this Terminator type thing, coming, and they probably destroy it, and then they move to the safe house. And in the safe house is a Delphi Council member that they talk to, and if they, if, 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 if they talk about that thing that they destroy, he's able to say, oh, this is a destroyer. They regenerate um, and kind of give them a, and they track and they will track you. And now they're going to, you came here to the safe house. We need to get things and we need to, to leave before this thing comes. And, you know, kind of, you blew the cover of the safe house. Well, somebody in the forums was like, my people didn't think about telling them that because they thought it was dead and I'm like my group did the same thing and there's nothing wrong with that it might tell them that the next time they talk with Delphi Council and kind of start briefing them and get getting them up to speed that they might include things like what they did and who they destroyed because then they might get that information if they thought about it great if not then this thing attacks the safe house while they're in it and yeah let them heal and let them you know take a shower <laughs> or whatnot but then they're they're you know he like how how is he going to give them the information is what was asked because the 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 game assumes that this is when it, what's going to happen that they're going to tell him this information and i'm like no it doesn't assume it just gives that in case if not he can yell that while this thing attacks like oh my god you brought a destroyer here here's what it's going to keep pursuing you and he grabs his bag and you know runs and then the group kind of knows this and one of the things that they find out is that as long as it's in Tharkold reality it's going to regenerate and it's going to keep coming after them but hey over there in this park dedicated to the first uh, cosmonaut statue that means that that's core earth hardpoint so if we go there and he comes to us there then we can destroy it in this core earth hardpoint so my party came up with a bright idea and other people might too which is fine of the, the we don't want this thing keep chasing us so we have knocked it out again here and let's just take it and if it starts to regenerate we'll just keep shooting it <laughs> as we haul it along okay if they want to do that and get rid of an extra encounter then that's fine i will let them do it but here's also what happened they move on and then they're coming up to another encounter and they want to use that close call again okay so i explained what that encounter is that that was a close call that they're going along the street and there is kind of a a theme that was happening was a bus or vehicles blocking the street for an ambush and they notice it and land vehicle you know i just ex kind of uh narrated it that you know he he flips their car you know does a 180 not not flips as in rolls it but 180 and they have the destroyer chained to the back of the car and when it flipped around you know the the chain goes taut and the destroyer goes that way and one of the the they, they notice some mines out there and one of the sharpshooter the elf sharpshooter that was in the party he shoots the chain and the chain busts and the destroyer flies and lands on the mines and blows it up 
and then they go off to the core earth because now they've just lost that and then they wait for it to show up and they take care of it that way that's I, something that they completely threw on me with that close call but I changed it and then I was allowed them to actually fight the destroyer again because they lost it by using that close call now if they would have went through that adventure or through that encounter then they would have fought the things and they still would have had the destroyer and they could still keep shooting it and then when they got to the core earth hard place you know they could just make sure it was destroyed and not worry about it it was kind of you know they did this instead of this or you could do both one or the other depending on your group so there's lots of fluid fluid movement that can go on that i really really like and when i am writing an adventure and when i'm seeing my co-authors do parts i really get excited when i see multiple ways to do things because then you're not railroading even on a linear path adventure mega adventure you're you're not railroading the players and forcing them to um, either roll for idea give an idea card and here's the only thing that you can do and it gives more the, the players more chances of, of doing cool things that they think of and as a game master you can roll with it so uh, that was that part once they get out there then they can go to a grid runner and again you don't want to go into the curve so when they come across the grid runner uh, the grid runner raven she's not going to go into the curve with them she's going to put those devices on their head and and jack them into the the cur and she's going to watch them on a screen and she's going to give them pointers and like hey take a left here and take a you know right there go straight ahead watch out for this that type of thing she's going to observe from the outside you do not want to go into the cur you if you go in you might have to there's difference between wanting and have to they had to they wanted to or they needed to get information from this so they get uh go into the cur and there's ways to avoid some things and they did a lot of avoidance of things they rolled really well in certain areas um and then they come across this information bank and everything is nasty and hellish in the cur and it's almost mc escherish where you're walking up ways and things are twisted and, and stuff like that and then to get the information you have to like grab the information as like sp spiritual energy and magic occult tech stuff is going all and giving you pain and you get flashes of this information so the information isn't just like a little data disk it's like going into your head and you as well as getting downloaded at the same time and giving you crazy uh, visions and their psychic attacks and, and stuff like that and then after that they have to make their way back and then they have to defeat these things to get out of the curve so again if you if you're wounding yourself going in and getting messed up while you're in and then you kind of have to go through a process that you might not even get out of to get out of the cur then yes at the after that the whole party was like never going into the cur again and I, that means that it was a success it was fun as in a game experience but the characters don't think it was fun the, the players could be like yeah that was that was pretty cool and wild but their characters never go, go back there and that's that balance of when it's fun for the players but the characters never want to go back that's the purpose of the cur in my opinion um, so there there's that type of thing um, they they learn at that point they learn that the person in charge of this whole brute ravenger horde is named straw and that's it stra which is the russian word for fear so they have to kind of at this point tell the delphi council hey this is the information that i have and after each one of these the uh the party could choose just to go back they could think that that's the end that they've solved it if that's what they do that's what they do you don't have to force them to keep going what they can do is they could go back instead of radioing out uh the to the delphi council hey this is what we got if they physically want to go back to say berlin then they could do that and just figure that during this time this much more stuff happens 
and it, maybe it's a little more desperate. Maybe there's more. They start hearing things about more cities being taken over by ravagers and things like that. And then once the Delphi Council figures that out, they send them back in. They're like, you are the ones who kind of are knowing this and have experienced Tharkold and understand what's going on. Now you, you know, we're, we're sending you back in. Well, during that meantime of the group and whatever, through messages, through physical going, or through whatever connections they might have once they give that information to the Delphi Council, the Delphi Council contacts their ally of Volkov. Um, not necessarily him, you know, it's not like Quinn is on the phone with President Volkov, but their agents uh, communicate with each other and they set up a, we will allow the Storm Knights to meet with an agent who has information on, on straw. And so, that leads to, to the next place, which is taking place in Kyiv, Ukraine, the, the capital city of Ukraine. So in this section of it, um, one of the things that I, in, in Tharkol, when you have three different factions, you don't want any of them to be good. You, you don't necessarily want all of them. They're various stages of evil, I'll say that. And then there are real world things happening between Russia and Ukraine. You can watch it and it's been going on since the uh, the CIS formed after the Soviet Union broke apart. There is lots of political stuff that I'm not necessarily going to talk about now, but it is happening. It is something that does happen and it is happening now. And in, in my view, I always, and if you've watched any of my views about game systems and stuff, a lot of times I can have, I can understand both sides. And I'll just say that in my view, there are legitimate, not everything's legitimate on both sides. There's some legitimacy, even for the, the bad guy Russians uh, taking, annexing parts of Ukraine for political reasons, yes, but there are people living in there that do want to stay there. So I don't want to say Russians are good, and I don't want to necessarily say, you know, they're, they're or that they're, they're the horrible, all Russians are horrible people. I have Russian friends, I have Ukrainian friends, and my being able to step out of that, I'm able to kind of look at it um, in a different perspective and not just see what's on the TV and what American journalists are saying. I can look into kind of history over certain things. Now, some of it is bad. Yes, war is bad, stuff like that. But I didn't want to just make it clear cut. I didn't want to make it like Ukrainians good, Russians bad, or Russians good, Ukrainians good, I, or bad. You know, I, I didn't want to just make it, boom, no shades of gray. So I give the Ukrainians a reason to not like the Storm Knights be because hold on I got an important phone call coming in sorry about that um, I had an important phone call for a, an appointment that I have uh, tomorrow so I needed to take that so basically the the point is I didn't want a clear-cut good guy bad guy I wanted the players to have options on who they chose to ally with. And their agent that they're supposed to connect with is Russian. The Ukrainian patriots who don't want Russia in their country, which yes, I wouldn't want somebody in my country either. Um, they are figuring that the Storm Knights who are supposed to meet the Russians then must be with the Russians attack the Storm Knights. The agent is not there. So maybe even at the beginning, the Storm Knights might think we were set up by Volkov and the Storm, the, uh, the, the Russian Patriots aren't expecting Storm Knights. So they're, they have a more number, but the Storm Knights are going to, to win. And so the, some remaining Patriots run away and the Storm Knights can choose to stay and figure out, hey, what's going on? And then later on they can track them or they can do a chase and the, the various ways of that. And the other thing is the, in the, this cell of these Ukrainian Patriots, the leader of it is more of a might makes right person. 
the previous leader who was more intelligent and could use the social axioms and wasn't always succumbing to the survival of the fittest type mentality of Tharkold, uh, that person uh, died, the new leader was a might makes right and therefore isn't necessarily well suited to to think along ways of negotiation and stuff so you're either with him or you're against him but the russians are very manipulative and stuff like that so the storm knights you can choose which side you're you know you could in there going hey wait we see that you're not R russians what's going on here we're just trying to meet somebody and they could try that they could fight they like i said they could do a chase they could later on track my group decided to, to track and then they get to the uh the cueve uh, uh metro the the subway tunnels and then there's a whole thing of going through the subway tunnels and they find that the ukrainian patriots have taken their agent svetlana hostage and one of the things that if they get into a a uh, firefight to kind of rescue her they can they can do some talking if they want to do it that way and try to get out information that way if they do fighting and again we give stats because we always kind of assume that there's some group out there that is going to want to fight so they can get stats out and you know they can they can do it that way one of the people in the ukrainians uh, basically the ukrainian patriots have figured out that there is a mole somewhere and they think that it is svetlana and she was in the city for a different reason. She was in there to talk to the, the Storm Knights. One of, like the second in command is actually the traitor, he's the mole. And if things start looking bad or the Storm Knights are, are in a fight against the, the Patriots, he will turn at the, the proper time because he doesn't want to die. And he is, uh, once the other Ukrainians are eliminated, he, he's fine with, you know hey i'm actually a double agent so depending on how your storm knights choose things there are various ways to do that and it's just a, something that i found would be um, interesting in that and then once uh, they either get the information or they rescue svetlana and then uh, basically they're given a task of a hey you want this information we'll give this information but do something for us and it is a puzzle. It's a, here's some coordinates and figure out what to do. And when you figure this out, then you um, will get an eternity shard. And give me then the eternity shard and the eternity shard traded for this information, which immediately Storm Knights probably don't want to give an eternity shard to Volkov. That's legitimate. That's a choice. But Volkov and the Delphi Council are working together. The Delphi Council has made arrangements for the Storm Knights to work with Svetlana. So there's lots of different choices. Choices, different consequences, depending what happens. We didn't want anything to be the right choice. We wanted various choices. And the way that I wrote things, and and John and Brian wrote things, the way we did that, sometimes the, the groups that we run don't go that way, and that's fine. That's the way that they want it to happen. They'll have it, you know, go that way. So um, the party then goes, and they do this puzzle, because Svetlana has ulterior motives. And as they're going to the new area, Obalon, which is in the northern part of Cuiv, the uh the the mole the double agent you know they part ways and he sends two messages out he sends one to the ukrainians because he's the mole and now he was second in charge so now he's in charge and he sends the ukrainians uh gives them the information that the storm knights are coming now the storm knights this is completely in the background the storm knights do not find out about this but um, the information is given there for the game master to understand and the game uh the the ukrainians are told hey they're here they just killed our leader and that puts conflict and why does he want conflict he wants the storm knights to side with the russian forces not the U ukrainians now he also calls the russians and this was something that i think uh, a game master that was talking on the uh, piazza forums 
maybe read wrong, but he's not sending the Russians to fight the Storm Knights. He's sending the Russians to fight the Ukrainians. And that is a, hey, they're on our side. They're helping us. Russians are helping us. Therefore, Russians are the good guys. And again, it's manipulative. It's social 25. It's figuring out this stuff. It's um, not necessarily completely lying to the Storm Knights, but it is withholding information from them. It's not telling them. It's sending people against them, and it's sending people to support them. Now, this completely would be different if they realized, um, if they didn't fight the Ukrainians down in the, in the metro. If they were talking with the Ukrainians and figured out what was going on and were like, hey, that's not the mole, this is somebody else. And maybe they would have made a deal with the Ukrainians. If that would have happened, then depending on if they found out that... Um, the, the mole, Valentin, if they found out that he, if they didn't find out that he was actually Russians, he would probably still call the, uh, you know, he would probably still do something um, against the knights and depending on if Svetlana was killed. So there's various ways that can happen. It's not a railroad. It's not you have to, to do these things. And then once they get to Ovalon, there's three kind of puzzles. Um, one is a simple climb or fly or whatever, get to the top of the building. Another one is more of a, uh, uh, a, a puzzle at a, at a statue of who am I. And another one is uh, playing a, a far cold video game that has it, it kind of scared the Storm Knights because it has one of those helmets and they're thinking Kerr, but it's like a, a it's not quite, it's not the Kerr, but it's still psionic powered. And one of the things that I've thought um, I liked the idea of, so I did it, was in Relics of Power there is a scene where in the games the Igri, um, the Storm Knights enter this Igri arena and they're fighting this big hulking, uh, basically it's like artillery on elephant legs. It's a, a natural being from a different world that was uh, invaded by Tharkold, and the creatures there were turned into basically walking all artillery. So in that one, they're facing off against this artillery, and in this one, you as a game player are put into the mind of one of these beasts. So if you wanted to run two different groups, you could theoretically have your one group fighting your other group and not realizing it. So there's that and i thought that that would be really fun to do and enjoyed that also i slipped in a little thing where if you have darkness or corruption that um, it might help you at a a, a cost um, if, if you're the one doing this game this eagerly so once they get these things they get another uh, coordination and they're sent to the eternity shard once they get to the eternity shard then one of my favorite tharkold threats of all time, the Saigon, the cybernetic occult tech dragon with a, a uh, minigun in its mouth instead of a breath weapon, a attacks the party and was sent by Thrachen. Because Thrachen at this point is realizing that, or his forces, um, Straw is aligned with him. One of his big gambits of or his. Uh, ideas to take control is these ra this Ravenger horde. So he's invested on getting rid of the Storm Knights, or at least Straw is. And so they send this Saigon against them, and that's kind of the end, big bad end guy of, of that act. So then they have this Eternity Shard. And if the party wants to just go back on the deal and go we got the shard we're going to the delphi council giving it to the delphi council we don't want this to go to volkov that is acceptable that i understand the storm knight's thinking um they're supposed to scan it and then they're given information to go up to chernobyl but if they don't want to do that, if they want to take it back, then you got to determine as the Delphi Council what the Delphi Council is going to do. The Delphi Council could be like, you did great. We don't really trust Volkov. So thank you for giving us the Eternity Shard. And then what happens is 
at some point, Volkov realizes this Ravenger horde is very, very bad. And he might still send the Delphi Council information of this is what's going to happen. Um, so you skip Act 6 and go to Act 7. Um, the other thing is maybe the Delphi Council isn't happy. Maybe they're like, we understand what you're thinking, but we connected you with Svetlana. We told you that she needs to, you know, work out a deal. A deal was made and you went back on the deal. That gives us a bad name because we're working with a country. We work with lots of countries. You know, we're not America, we're the Delphi Council. And anytime our agents make a deal and then go back on that deal, it makes us as an organization look bad. And again, Volkov has Starkol Tech 25 information plaster all over, you know, the news and whatnot, you know, Storm Knights, a band, you know, the Delphi Council of Agents, a, you know, break the, the peace, you know, or, you know, go back on an agreement. That, that type of stuff. And they could do that. So there, there's various ways that then, okay, now we're sending you back to Act 6 a little bit later, but we're sending you there. You need to do what you said you were going to do. Again, choices that the players can make with repercussions and depending on how the Delphi Council is in your world, it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. Maybe you establish it uh, at the beginning, make it like, hey, there is going to be some hard choices here, but we need this information so much, just do it, just bite your tongue and do it. Or there could be the, yes, we want all eternity shards as the Delphi Council and break all treaties and all agreements and all that to get it. Various ways to do it, leave it up to your hands. My group decided to go and see what was going on. They scanned the, uh, they, they have been thinking, oh, we're not, we don't want to give it to her. But then they got a, hey, do this with this uh, eternity shard. And they're like, well, let's see where this goes. So they go to the Chernobyl area. And when they get in there, there is a psychic thing that puts them into reliving experiences. And they go through two past and two future experiences. Um, the Chernobyl meltdown, a also a when people are, are fleeing. And it's kind of a, a Torganized Core Earth, which isn't reality Earth. But it's similar, you know, the Chernobyl incident did happen in 1986. And etc etc and it just um more sensationalized so they have to get through this and the very last one everybody it, it's the other ones were similar to dsrs but not exactly dsrs the last one everybody has to make independently and if one person doesn't make it everybody goes back again before the group got to do it as a group and if they didn't succeed they'd have to redo it and redo it and they might take some damage and stuff. Now, I had forgotten from the time that um, I helped write this, or you know, I was writing this with with Brian and John, to the time that I played it with a, a new group, that the damage wasn't automatic. That it was a if you fail, you have to do it again, and then you get a willpower roll to see if you take damage. And I did it as a everybody takes <laughs> damage and it got to the point of hey this is going to be a death spiral because you're using more resources you're not getting those resources back but then when I realized oh wait no it's a willpower to, to not take damage then it's it's a little easier to escape but everybody is probably gonna have to spend some resources getting out of this um, this predicament this psychic thing if you were an ord you would not get out and that was the the purpose only storm knights are able to get out of this mind thing so then there's three locations again i like threes and do them just like in obalon where you could go um to the, the there was a, a statue a building and a video game do it in any order here there's three things do them in any order and this was another thing that I changed slightly from how I wrote it. Um, if I would be playing at the table, I would probably do it as the book says. But I was doing it on an online tabletop. An online tabletop, I can easily um, 
take pictures and images and cut them. So basically I had this whole area as a soft point, which was core earth axioms, but the pain and um, kind of all the bad things associated with the Chernobyl accident that happened and the radiation and all that, I turned it into a hot zone first. And then I kept the world laws. So the axioms were core earth, but the world laws were Tharkul. And there were three, um, one, one world law is usually, or one world law is cosm cards usually. And the other two are some mechanical things. So they, when they went into a core earth soft point, core earth axioms, but they still had Tharkul's cosm cards. And they were still going with, uh, the law of domination and the law of, uh, I believe it's savagery, the law of, or pain. I can't, uh, right now I can't recall which one is causing cards and which one is if you do damage, then you get um, a shock. If you do wounds, you get a, a point of shock back. But basically I had those separate. And then there's three, three cleansings that they do. And each cleansing, when I was on the virtual tabletop, it was very easy for me to just say, okay, you do this cleansing, this cleansing, one, one is associated with the law of pain, one is associated with the law of uh, domination, and one is associated with the law of savagery. Or is that living land? They come up with really close names. <laughs> and I, I wrote this and as always, I just kind of have little mind things so hold on humor me for a moment domination pain and Ferocity, sorry, not savagery. Savagery is living, living land. Ferocity is Tharkul. So, sorry about that. So, in the tabletop, when they would cleanse that area of that Tharkul world law, that Tharkul world law kind of was filtered through the Eternity Shard, um, kind of like you know, like a filter. The Eternity and the Eternity Star Shard started changing. So, Eternity Shards are usually blue and red swirls. And when they did it, the first little thing, a, a few of the little swirls turned to purple and black. And depending on if people are actually looking at it, and one of my characters was like, I actually look at this, so they noticed it. Otherwise, there's kind of a, a check to go along with it. And so each time they filter these world laws, what I then did was I replaced one. It was really easy for me to just have the... The table tent on the virtual tabletop and have each a, a little section of the uh, Tharkold cards three sections cover up it so it kind of looked like a a half Tharkold half um, core earth table tent but then when they cleansed one of these world laws I just removed that section and then the other two sections were there and then when they cleaned the next cleansed the next one I pulled off the next one and then when they cleaned that I pulled off and when they clean uh, cleared and cleaned the the uh, the Tharkal law that is associated with the cosm cards then they got core earth cosm cards so in the adventure as written it is a little bit different um, because I didn't want necessarily people to to take cosm you know, need a table tent and then cut it and paste it and and stuff like that. It's just really easy to do in a virtual tabletop. So that was kind of the idea that I had was oh I could do this a little more interestingly, but it it works fine the way it is um, in here. It's just sometimes you change things to, depending on the situation, depending on your group, and it was really fun. Um, so they do that and at the end the eternity shard has changed to a void shard it basically has been corrupted and the eternity shard was all about preserving uh, Ukraine and keeping invaders from coming into it and it changed it from a bulova which is a, a wooden mace it's a symbol of uh, 
power and sovereignty in Ukraine, it changed the Bulova of so uh, sovereignty into the Bulova of conquest. And the reason was because if you're only defending Ukraine, it's a little bit like this. But if you're using it for conquest, especially what Volkov might want, then he can use that against invaders of any realm, not just trying to defend Ukraine. And he's not native Ukrainian, so it wouldn't really help him in ways. So they have made a void shard. They have taken a nice eternity shard and corrupted it as storm knights and each time they're like we're not doing a good thing but the core earth soft point by doing this becomes a core earth hard point and it also cleanses the radiation they did a good thing it just had a side effect of corrupting an eternity shard well, then they have to decide, do we take this Eternity Shard and do we deliver it to Svetlana? We made an agreement with the Delphi Council to do this. But now it's a Void Shard. Shouldn't we give Void Shards to the Delphi Council? So there's that type of, do we do this? Do we do do that? And when um, they're, they're told, basically, once they do that, helicopters with troops come in and... Uh, Svetlana's happy. They did what she wanted them to do. She is willing to trade the information for that. She's happy. Um, she has a, a huge force because she's not sure on the Storm Knights. Now, my Knights were mostly not wanting to do it, but were going of the, okay, we'll do this. And the person who used the Bulova during all of that, it wasn't like they traded off. They gave it to one person. He held it during all the cleansing. He was kind of, the character was the mild mannerested character of the whole party. A teenager who is very faithful, um, who was helping people. Um, when they found people down on their luck, he invoked the miracle of bounty to feed them and doing this. And he basically, before the game session started, uh, I, th I thought it was a complete joke, but it wasn't a joke. It was a... Uh, I'm gonna derail this session because they had they had went through like the first the, the whole cleansing part they went through it like super fast and they got through four of the five scenes and I thought the next adventure the fifth scene would be fine all you have to do is exchange the the boulevard for the the information and the character is like I'm gonna take it sideways and he did and that whole session was this big huge fight with uh, Svetlana's forces now again right there boom they shot rolled a one to soak boom she's dead so there's no negotiation whatsoever going on uh, basically he had it that this void shard and having the the uh, fear or sorry pain ferocity and um, domination laws go through this thing that he kind of affected him and made him want to dominate things it's the he's holding the void shard of domination it's not anything in the book but it's something that i could see as a game master it was like i you know if, if i was just looking at it as a straight game mechanics going there's no reason you're doing this you're just doing this so that you have a reason not to give her the void chart. I could have taken that mentality. I did not. I was like, this is a great adding to the story. The first couple of rounds, people were still trying to convince him not to do it. No, not to do that. And then he used the pyrokinesis thing and, and she rolled the one to soak. And then, okay, now the battle is invested. And it was a hard battle. And it's meant to be a hard, difficult battle. It is supposed to be kind of like the wall thing in Nizhny Novgorod which you got the two tanks there and all the people up along the walls well this has two helicopters uh you know with big auto cannons and missiles and then a bunch of troops on the ground fighting and it was very very deadly and it was intense and it was fun and the party went completely off the rail there were people that had a romance Svetlana uh people that were arguing of the Volkov is our ally um, he gave us, you know, visas and, and stuff to get into this, weapon permits to get into this. We're going to lose everything. The Delphi Council said to do this. I added, and this was the, the last thing I added, um, which was brought up because somebody 
Um, as I said, they'd got the, the thing wrong in Obolon when the group was going to Obolong, They got it wrong that the Russians were supposed to attack the Ukrainians, and they had the Russians attack the Storm Knights. And the question was posed, they, they don't want to go to Act 6. So I brought up a, a little temptation. And they're like, well, they're not going to believe it because the Russians attacked them. And I was like, what do you mean the Russians attacked them? And oh uh, so and so called the russians and he they attacked them well something was missed and this game master had them attack so i was like okay then you just have valentine that person not just be a mole but be a triple agent and svetlana finds out about that and she calls and uh, profusely apologizes and says this is not right he did this we realize he did this against you. We've killed him. Uh, we have then also talked to the Delphi Council. And the Delphi Council and Volkov have agreed that if you do this, uh, you know, and give us the shard at the end, give us this bulova, then there is this core earth now. Um, soft point becomes a hard point, but there is this core earth hard point that we will allow the Delphi Council to establish a headquarters there. Now, a couple of things in the background. Yes, this will absolutely benefit the, the Delphi Council. Volkov, this isn't something like, oh, they'll go in there and then I'll attack them. Um, Volkov sees it as this is an area that we abandoned 35 years ago. There are no buildings that are, are very few besides the main power plant. There are very few buildings of living or research, etc. So anything that comes in is going to have to be built by the Delphi Council. Now that can give us a boost because we can get some profit of, you know, uh, construction workers and stuff needing to come in and food and stuff needing to go there. So that can help him. Um, it's an area that they can't really use. Volkov is not really interested in a core Earth area. He's trying to expand the Tharkhold area. Jezreel hates hard points. And that's mentioned in the source book, not necessarily in this uh, mega adventure, but Jezreel hates hard points and makes it a point to take out hard points. So she is sending forces to the hard point de defended by the Delphi Council. That's less that Volkov has to do. So. While there are reasons Volkov doesn't care about the hard point, it's he's not losing anything, and he might gain something against Jezreel. The Delphi Council also gains something; they gain an actual base if they can keep it. Um, so I, I suggested this: have her call them. This was a horrible thing, triple agent, blah blah blah, and we're going to sweeten the pot. Um, we're not just going to give you the information of Strah who what was the original agreement, we feel bad about this, we're gonna give you a hard point. And it's a 17 kilometer hard point, it's much bigger. And the reasoning is that that whole area of Chernobyl and nearby cities and towns all under that thing, it has a heavy, significant. it's a bad significance, but it has a heavy significance to core earth. Um, so that was the, the rationale behind that. Now, my group was kind of arguing that, hey, this this is a thing. But then uh, Alex went dark, Dark Alex appeared, and he uh, threw a wrench in everything, and then fine, they, they go along with it. Um, they then, uh, she basically, the the information, the data pad that was, had the information, uh, they, they destroy it, and they extract a little bit of information, they didn't get all the information and they get that the Ravager hordes are, are descending and a push is going to Moscow to get rid of the Jezreel and Volkov factions in Moscow. So they go back to Moscow and they meet up, they give the information to the Delphi Council and they meet up with the um, previous Delphi Council members and allies that they met up with. So if, if they rescued Saber Company, any surviving members of Saber Company are there. And if they met, you know, they still have a good relationship with Raven, um, who was the good runner who didn't go into the Kerr with them, but who was kind of their guide, she's there. Um, 
Mayakovsky, who the the safe house that they went to that either stayed safe or didn't, depending on if they told him or not, um, he is there. And they're having an argument over which side do they want to ally with. Do they want to ally with Volkov? And if the party had went with the we are going to keep our relationship with Volkov and the Delphi Council good, we are going to honor the deal with uh, Svetlana well, and they could choose that side. Volkov's side is the less strong side in Moscow at this time. Jezreel has a numbers and power advantage, but the Ravengers are just, um, the Ravengers could, could take all of them. The Storm Knights have to choose which side, because Jezreel's side and Volkov's side, even against Thrachen, are not necessarily going to coordinate together. So the group needs to decide. And they got people on this side, and they got people on this side. Now, again, in my game, Svetlana was killed, so she wasn't there. If they made a deal with her, she would be there. And here's another question that comes up, so I'll answer this. The way that it's written in this final act of the Mega Adventure is um, part of the Delphi Council, and I believe that would be Saber Company, is very much on pro vocal. They are, the, you know, the Delphi Council has an alliance with him, whether or not it's shady or they're always, you know, Volkov is always truthful. There's still a alliance with him that we need to, to go with. And Mayakovsky is, is a native Russian, and he is like, in his mind, Volkov is bad, and Jezreel has more power, and is stronger at this moment, so we need to help the stronger very much in that might makes right, and Raven's along with him. And Svetlana obviously wants there to be Volkov, but she doesn't have her two helicopters and all you know all these other people. And actually, that was brought up. Why was there only two helicopters when there was all these people and you saw half a dozen flying above? And it's basically because if there's a half a dozen helicopters with auto cannons and rocket launchers, any type of fight would be dead. Storm Knights. And there could be two flying, and the other ones landed the troops, got the troops down, and then took off. But there's two still kind of there. That's the, the rationale behind that. But those forces had to stay in Kiev. And one of the people um, who had went, you know, was, was asking about this adventure was like, why did she have all these soldiers and military and stuff there, and then here she's alone? And it's because there she had those forces and she didn't couldn't bring those forces with her those forces are in Kyiv they're on the western side of the river and on the eastern side are Jezreel forces they're having a fight right there those people soldiers could not go with her and so she is trying to to plead with them um, if, if she's there if she's alive but she also offers to, hey, you gave me this void shard, I will let you use it if you want to use it, if you choose Volkov. Um, because she also wants to see how it operates in battle. So there's there's all these twists of, yeah, let's do some good things. Let's make a, a core Earth hard point, you know, take siphon out the radiation. It's no longer a hot spot. It no longer has these dark cold world laws, but we changed an eternity shard to a void shard so there's all these consequences now my party also had a discussion over well we we messed up there with volkov do we try him again do we try to say hey okay yeah that was a thing that happened um we were attacked by techno demons and uh <laughs> they were killed sorry <laughs> you know there, there were questions of like, you know, how, how do we bring this stuff up? But they they finally, uh, more they were voting and more people agreed to go with the uh, Jezreel. She was stronger and they also thought Volkov is more manipulative and a, a higher uh, person who understood strategy tactics a lot more and Jezreel was just a crazy person who would be easier if she won as High Lord and won that then she would be easier to take out is what they their rationale was now as a game master and as a writer 
I kind of know that that's not necessarily true, but that's what they thought, and I let them go with it. That's what they wanted to do. So then there's points um, to that that they get to the end. They choose which side they fight, and they fight Straw. Hopefully they win. And then uh, Thrachen's uh, Straw under Thrachen, his master plan to help his master gain Moscow and take it over is uh, defeated the storm knights win <laughs> and the depending on who they went with who they went against could have ramifications volkov's alliance with the adelphi council is it still solid and strong has it completely unraveled by what they did um, jezreel they sided with her this time but does she really even care about them the next time they her forces meet them Will they even acknowledge that? Will they? Will they not? It's it's your uh, Cosmoverse, your game. You decide. Um, so yeah, a hundred and hundred, uh, one hour thirty five, twenty five minutes. So an hour and a half of going through this mega adventure. But I just wanted to show that there are many different ways that you could do do it, and that's what we wanted as authors. That's what I wanted. That's what John wanted, and that's what Brian wanted. We wanted multiple choices. And your group might not go through all these acts. If they don't, that's fine. If they, like I said, if they, if they get to a point that they want to leave, they leave. And you can skip Act 6. They have an Eternity Shard. They find out Straw is in Moscow. They go there. Make some of the encounters a little more beefed up against them to show that the time delay, these Ravagers uh, were able to come in and get more uh, basically do more stuff before the Storm Knights were a would be able to go in figure out in your group in your world how close is Volkov allied with the Delphi Council if you don't have the Delphi Council like my home group doesn't have a Delphi Council then you have to decide who you know if you even have this civil war going on if you don't have the civil war and it um, and a Ulysses uh, Spila panel that I was on and I was talking about how I don't have the Delphi Council and for a time I, I had uh, I didn't want a uh, Cronod to die and, and until I started really thinking about this three-way civil war and how interesting it could be and the question was posed how would you do this how would you do this if you didn't have that three-way civil war and you would put it in a different city besides Moscow but you would have Cronod being the lazy demon high lord that he is he would send he would say you're my three top people you fight out expanding my area and put it in an area that they were contesting very easy to to change so depending on your cosmoverse your storm knights your players the way you can modify this you don't have to do it as a you know scene one two three four five next act one two three four five next act if they stop at act three in or sorry scene three in act one because they got that information and their primary objective is that information and s screw saber company and go on let them go on maybe it gives them an advantage because they're not taking as much time maybe it gives them a disadvantage or after the end they're like you are right there why didn't you you know rescue them well you said that was a secondary objective yes i guess we, we did say that you know that type of thing um, again, that Act 6, I really love that Act 6, um, but if your Storm Knights don't want to do it, don't necessarily force them. Tempt them. Tempt them. Oh, yeah, tempt them. If, if you're able to cleanse the, you know, then Svetlana might kind of give them a little more of her plan. I think that you can use this to cleanse this. If it works, then you get a core earth hard point for the delphi council you can kind of sweeten that pot and you know kind of, kind of do do that so lots of choices lots of things we want to do the the other comment i wanted to make was there's usually a MacGuffin, and the bulova the eternity shard could have been a MacGuffin. and one of the things that we went into is we didn't there, there was a lot of get this data thing and, and take it here and get this information and, and do that. And so there was a lot of these like MacGuffins going around and I didn't want this Eternity Shard to be a MacGuffin. So 
transforming it to a void shard, having the players actually do things, holding it, and it affecting this Chernobyl and changing it um, made it seem less of a MacGuffin and more of an actual thing that they use. And so that that's the, the one of one of the things that kind of fell into place when I was like, I don't want this just to be, uh, oh, we grab the, the Eternity Shard and then we either give it to Svetlana or not. I want to do something with this. I want to make this an actual thing used in the adventure so it wouldn't just be a, a fetch quest. It would actually be, a, okay, it started off as a fetch quest, but then it became part of the plot. So that was my thinking on that. So hopefully you enjoyed my deep dive into Blood on the Blasted Lands. Um, hopefully if you are a player, you did not watch this and you're not listening to me now. And if you're a game master who is interested in playing this, you can see kind of my take on things, why things were in here that they were, that you don't have to go in a certain direction with it, let your players change up thing. What the, you know, I gave a whole bunch of choices about getting over the wall if, or under the wall or through the wall. If your players come up with it a different way, let them do a different way. Um, there's lots of encounters then that you could just take stats from this thing and move it over here. So having said that, I will end toward Tuesday for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, until next time, I am Lee McCracken Jr., a.k.a. Zoral Chan, Less Than Guru. Hit uh, subscribe if you want to get future content. Click like if you liked. If you didn't like, you can click dislike, add a comment. And until next time, I will catch you later.